Dorden, County Durham. A community of 2,300 people, which depends almost entirely for its livelihood on mining coal from seams extending three miles out under the North Sea. Millions of pounds have been invested in Dorden Colliery, making it the most modern undersea coal mine in Western Europe. The picks and drills have been largely replaced by the latest coal cutting machines and techniques. After the upheavals of the last two years, the government is now pumping hundreds of millions of pounds into the coal industry and has announced its intention of tackling problems such as compensation for pneumoconiosis. But other problems remain. This film shows the way of life in Dorden, the daily routine of the miners working under the North Sea, the pressure and influences that bear down upon an enclosed mining community. We're Dorn. It's not a picturesque place. It hasn't got a, a lot of amenities, but the ones we have got were really put to good use, you know. It's it's not actually the place, it's the, it's the people what live in it. I mean, I've never known anything else for a start. All my family's round us, and, um, and there's always someone there. I mean, I, I've known this all my life. I suppose I'll never leave here. When you walk, when I walk along the street with Chad, if we're going out, if he passes someone and doesn't say hello, I say, "Oh, do you not know him?" <laughs> because it's um, hello to everyone he passes. You know, the more or less everybody knows everybody, everybody else, else, especially at the pit. Mm -hmm. And um, and I say, "Oh, did you not know him?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's something strange. Yeah. And um, I mean, when we go out all the time, it's just, um, oh, that's Charlie and his wife sort of thing. Well, I think a lot of people, yes, they think we're um, daft, daft. <laughs> yeah, well, let, let's put it like this, you know, you can go on your holidays. And um, when we went to Mallorca, somebody said to my husband, uh, well, you don't look like a miner. I mean, he doesn't carry his pick around on his back all day, does he? Mm. You know, I mean, what do you expect him to look like? You know, filthy dirty. Cloth, cap and yes. white scarf. That's right. I mean, he's not going to walk around black, you know. I think they think, um, some people think miners are ignorant. They're, they're idiots. Well, I mean, right. some people think, well, there must be to go down the pit in the first place. That's right. <laughs> his, father. his father and his brother, they were down the pit. His brother came out of the pit, mind, after he'd seen someone have a nasty accident. And he was a deputy on that face. And um, he came out of the pit after that. <laughs> He'd more or less... Um, I mean, nothing had happened to him, but he must have more or less had enough. Oh, yes. Yeah. Same with my brother. Mm -hmm. My father was down the pit, and when my brother left school, there was nothing else for him to do, really, you know. 
No. And he trained to go down the pit. His first day down the pit, he saw my dad on his hands and knees crawling. He got the next cage up and he says, that's the last. He mm -hmm. says, you'll never get me to be like that. Mm -hmm. And he joined the fleet air arm. You see, that's all he could do, join the forces. For yes. Ben Ford, there was yes. nowhere else there he could go, else, no. But he said, I would never live the life of my dad. Mm -hmm. The miner gives only a miner when he's down the pit. And when he comes to bank onto the surface, he can be a dart man, a dog man, a dance man, a golfer. You see, and he creates his own recreational uh, facilities. A mining community might look to be closely knitted, yet the majority of miners are just like anyone else, you know. He's looking after his own family. And, and this is sort of the, the, the basics. His family, his house, his wife, his car, his conditions, his coloured telly, his fitted carpets, his washing machine, his holidays, you know? Now, it's when these things are being attacked that then you get the solidarity feeling of coming together against a common enemy. And if they don't, for instance, if they think they're not getting sufficient wages, then they look a, a solid mass. But remove, remove the uh, things like fights for wages, fights for better conditions, and you get people going about their own affairs. How the hell you get the true wishes of the people is only through the likes of a bloke like myself who uh, meets the men, meets every ship that goes into the pit uh, at some time or another, talks with the men, find out what, what they want, and then this is where the power of a, a, a Lodge Secretary comes in, because he is speaking for what he's heard uh, of what the men want. Once the boy goes over and goes down the pit, I don't know where it is. You can't explain it, but once they go to the pit, it's very rare. They sort of leave, you know. 
the ha it seems as though it's a hard step for them to come out of the pit once they've gone in. And uh, the teenagers, well, hard, jobs are hard to come by around here. And uh, as a last resort, some of them go to the pit, you know, and they sort of do their training. But when it comes to the point where they have to go down the pit, actually down in the cage, you get a lot of them that sort of leave, you know. We just don't want that sort of life. Where well, the accident uh, happened in 66, and it was on a face, actually, if, unlucky for some to say, it was unlucky for me, it was zone 13. And it was, in, you know, new supports had come on this face. And the conditions were very, very bad. And actually we were timbering up on the face and the stone come away and I got buried. And I was buried for about an hour and I had morphia while I was in the fall of stone like. And since then I've had back trouble since this accident, you know, and it's really, I've never been rid of it since 1966. I went on light work at the time, took a lighter job. I was off for about nine months through the injury, you know, I'd, Crushing injuries and arm injury and injury to me leg and me, me back. And uh, I took a lighter job and then I had four kids to bring up so I had a gun back on power loading again. And I've lost work through it. But since then it's reoccurred and doctors say it's through me old injury in 1966. That's why I'm suffering from this injury in 74. The fact that we have nearly two and a half thousand men here makes it extremely difficult to establish the understanding, the two-way flow of information that one can have at a smaller pit of, say, 300 men or 200 men. Management is pushed. I'm pushed because I have uh, budgets to meet. I've got outputs to uh, achieve. I've got economic targets to uh, uh, achieve. And these are set by me uh, in conjunction with my superiors, and they're very real, uh, real elements of the performance of the of the business. And they're they're real not only in the sense that well we're just producing a few calls or, or we're doing extremely well at dawn, but they're important because they're important to the community. This community's got to live, and it'll only live with a very healthy pit at dawn. Tom's off work with his back at present. 
and uh, he'd gone to bed and he couldn't get out of bed, he couldn't walk. And I was at work and the little boy, just the youngest one was in it. And he'd had a 